Hey, welcome back to Evil's Comics. I'm Evil Mike. Hope y'all having a great Saturday. Um, so this is gonna be my review on Suicide Squad, the Suicide Squad, uh, the movie, and um, a little, you know, side, I don't know, tips or tricks or spec, I don't know. Um, my thoughts overall, I, I love the movie, honestly. Yes, I have a soft spot for DC. Um, I also am a big, fun, uh, big fan of the director, James Gunn. Um, he totally speaks my language on many different levels. Now, first off, I'm, tr I'm gonna try and do this spoiler free. Um, no spoils, yes, I'm gonna give you my, you know, my thoughts and my review, but um, not really into the story or anything. I want you to go see it. You know get your own opinion type thing honestly I love it and as far as like a movie I would give it an A plus you know I mean it does have um, rewatch capability it was a very good uh, concisive um, you know beginning middle and end type story um, one moment It has a ton of characters in the movie, and um, a lot are well known. Some are very little <laughs> known. Um, case in point, Weasel. Um, and for those of y'all who don't know, Weasel is a character in the DC universe, but um, he is specifically modeled after Bill the Cat. It's like a 90s pop culture reference, another comic book character, but just not that type of comic book character. But look up Bill the Cat. I love Bill the Cat. Um, yeah, but if you see Bill the Cat, you'll kind of get the, why Weasel looks the way he does and why he moves the way he does. Um, but honestly, every character in the movie, they did an outstanding job. There were some characters that I wasn't a big fan of when they, you know, were releasing uh, news about this and that character, like the Javelin or, um, uh, what is his name, TDK or... <laughs> But um, honestly, every single character, they had their part, they had their role. Every actor killed it, was, was excellent. I mean, it was well acted, it was well written. Um, I will say this, there are parts of the movie, and specifically in the beginning, that just kind of come off like it's left unsaid, but you'll find out at the end of the movie that James Gunn does a very nice job of, of tying up all the pieces. It is a movie that I say you need to pay specific detail. I mean, you don't have to. It's a fun adventure ride. You can just watch it, and it's pretty, um, you know, plain and cut and simple, you know, once you get past the main juice of the story. But if you really pay attention, I mean, there's like all kind of stuff in the background. James Gunn is known for having a lot of Easter eggs in this movie, and there are a ton of Easter egg movies. I think I counted 25 that I caught. But I only watched it the one time, and I was watching it with my best friend, uh, D-Boy504 TV. Um, we both loved it. We both had, a, had fun. Honestly, we laughed, you know, equally throughout the movie. You know, we gasped. Um, <clears throat> honestly, there was a point in the movie where I almost cried. I mean, and it wasn't, honestly, it wasn't like sadness or anything like that. It was just... It was because I'm a comic book fan, and I've been waiting so long to have comic books shot on, you know, the big screen, but done in the right way, and they're not exactly there yet. We're getting there with the MCU, and this is kind of proof the last couple DCU movies have been getting better, but with this movie, I feel like DCU is, is finally moving in the right direction. Um, don't be scared. We do know that James Gunn is directing one more DCU movie, um, and he is doing Guardians of the Galaxy. He has two planned with Marvel. He has Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and right before that, he's going to do a Guardians of the Galaxy, like, Christmas special, modeled after, um, the, you know, Star Wars Christmas special, and supposedly you have to watch that before you watch the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. But, um, James Gunn is... Uh, on, he is uh, signed and promised that he will is directing one more DC uh, uh, you you know DCU movie. We don't know what it is. He said it's not going to be another Suicide Squad movie. We know that much. We do know he is attached to some of um, the Peacemaker show, 
which they, as of now, it will be airing in January. Um, and for those of y'all don't know, Peacemaker is a character in, 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 this, in this movie. And uh, yes, he, he is, uh, there, there will be, he, I mean, John Cena is getting his own show. We kind of know this. A lot of people that forget this, but Suicide Squad, it, it was, you know, kind of filmed a long time ago. It just kept getting pushed back through COVID. So they had more time on the editing floor and stuff like that, redefining shots. Um, I, I don't feel like there's going to be an extended because of the, the, you know, it wasn't really like, I think it got pushed back like once, but after that it was just they kind of spent more time focusing on the movie, and you can tell. Um, there, there was like, like in the, in the very beginning there was stuff that happens, and if you really pay attention, like the comic logic in this movie, like pay, it plays a major importance in the movie. Um, you know, like for instance, you know, I, I will tell, I will give you one hint, but if you don't see a body, you know, maybe that person's not dead, kind of thing. Um, and it's not a spoiler. The movie is called Suicide Squad. I can tell you that not all the people shown make it to the end of the movie. Um, at one point, some, you know, some, some of them start dropping off like flies. Um, and that there were some really big surprises. I will say that there's one. Um, that, that surprised the hell out of me uh, and to the fact that they made it apparent that you knew that it wasn't just a, a, a gimmick that you, what you were seeing was for real um, but okay another thing that I can say that James Gunn did with this movie is he kind of played on all aspects of the, the genre of Suicide Squad you know it is a direct continuation of the first film Suicide Squad, David Aver's uh, Suicide Squad with Jared Leto and you know everybody. Um, it's not like a direct sequel as far as like, hey, this this movie happened and then the next day this movie happened. It's not like that. It's just set in the same world and there are nods to certain things. As for instance, like Captain Boomerang, you know Harley's like, hey man, I haven't seen you know. I mean there are certain kind of nods to that movie. Um, but another thing is he has actually tied the, this movie specifically with a lot of events that happened in the Suicide Squad. If you've followed, like this, if you've been a Suicide Squad fan since like I, the, whenever it started in the 70s or whatever, and the, I, do, I do know that the, one of the Easter eggs is the creator of the Suicide Squads is in the movie. Um, I think he plays like a scientist in the background when they're doing the, um, the, the Nazi scenes. Um, but... Um, he he does it. He does this thing where like you know if you were following the Suicide Squad from the seventies, there's a couple tidbits of like stuff that does happen. I want to say like seventy five percent in the film. So if you know that those storylines back then, then it might not come as such a big surprise because if you're a comic book fan, I mean some people die and then they they get resurrected years later, you know, and, and there's mystical and magical reasons they get resurrected. But you know, death is not a thing in comic books. So, some people, yes, like like poor old Uncle Ben in Spider-Man's world, you know, he has never been resurrected, but, um, I mean, we kind of know that some people, they, they stay dead for a while, but eventually, you know, maybe due to events, they somehow they come back. Um, so I will say that there was kind of nods in that direction, like stuff that happened story-wise back in like the 80s and stuff like that in the 70s did kind of, it, ha it had played out in the movie. Um, and he also tied in same, some modern um, Suicide Squad. I have some Suicide Squad books here just, you know, <clears throat> because I am a fan and I've been reading with the uh, 52 and I just like that Harley kind of mesh up cover. Um, this is one of those lintograph, you know, like it moves around, whatever. Um, but I wanted to show you some things that kind of like tied in this. This is, uh, this is not the most recent Suicide Squad, I think this is like two weeks ago. But Idris Elba plays Bloodsport. And this is Bloodsport's iteration and he appeared in the 90s during the whole death of Superman. You know, basically he showed up and, and shot Superman with a kryptonite bullet and was kind of known from that. Um, that this comic that is it is specifically about Bloodsport because he has been minus out of the storyline, but he is one of the major characters in the movie. 
Um, in this issue, you will notice that his armor right here looks exactly like the movie because it is specifically from this. Um, James Gunn like kind of designed this and supposedly it was designed after a xenomorph. But um, it's not really explained like in the movies or anything why Bloodsport looks like that. He does mention certain ties to the 90s comics, like um, I think Waller is the one that mentions that he shot uh, Superman with the kryptonite bullet. But um, he, he does have the, the helmet and all the, the alien, or it appears to be super high-tech alien-like weaponry. It is multiverse tech in, in which he is using, and because currently he is working for Waller and he is traveling through different earths looking for recruits for the suicide squad it's not gone into great detail in the movie it's just more like a easter egg nod to the current appearance and look of bloodsport but um this this is a key book if you do not know this this is bloodsports you know from this is his first like look appearance or whatever you want to call it this is the first time he showed up you know with this costume that actually appears in the movie um, and it, it's not like a coincidence, it's the same costume, they, they you know, they, they played on it. Um, another book that it is easily obtained, I found this in the dollar bin, but this is uh, King Shark's first ever cameo. It is a, this is Superboy, uh, like, zero hour, uh, issue number zero. But right here at the very end, you get to see a very small two clips of King Shark, and it is... Right here is you can see his eyes and then right here you can see his teeth with some blood And I mean you can still find this pretty easily in the dollar bins now. It's not his first appearance You know, this is just his first cameo, but I mean I'll take a cameo especially for a dollar Another easily found a key book that appear this character specifically appears in this movie and is a major major character um, but this is a Suicide Squad issue number 24 and Once you get to this page, you'll recognize someone this character has appeared many times throughout uh, DC's history, but this is the current iteration of this character and this is the thinker um, You might recognize him maybe for you know because he is technically a flashback guy But he has current I mean he has shown up on the flash TV show but uh, this specific iteration right here, you will notice he looks specific, you know, exactly like the version. It's because that's who he was modeled after. And this is his first appearance, you know, currently in modern comics. Um, I don't know, you know, some little spec news, some stuff that you can find very cheaply. I do believe that this, a lot of people will enjoy this movie. I've heard mixed reviews from a couple different people. Like, I talked to the guy at the LCS counter, and he was like, I liked it, but, you know, it could have been better. Okay, now, I do have my complaints. There, there are things that I, I would like to change, and, because there are some really great characters in this movie, and some of my favorite characters in the movie, they do make it to the end. Um, and, and there's some that I really really loved and, and they just don't make it to the end um, Not not spoilers or anything, but um, I don't know why Hollywood does that You know, it's like why give us these these wonderful imagine you know the, And we know they're gonna get sequels like why why kill them off like especially in a, in a fashion where, where they don't look like they could resurrect from the way you killed them off type thing um I will say that the movie was rated R if you do not know, so um, be very wary with watching it with younger kids because um, James Gunn, his first earlier movies were trauma horror movies and he, he kind of used this rated R, you know, in a, it's not in a bad way or anything but it is a very gory movie at some points. Um, there are definitely some points that, that parts that made my friend cringe and like oh god you know um but i mean in my opinion it, it was done very tasteful it is but it is very gory that that's kind of the the only thing that i really know that was rated r in the movie it was more um like a little bit of language but a lot of gore but it is a like a action-packed kind of violent movie i mean suicide squad is not your typical movie it's not about a bunch of heroes it, it is specifically about a bunch of villains that have been captured by the american government to go do something or else they're gonna die you know because they got bombs in the back of their neck type thing so i mean 
we're basically rooting for the the bad guys and, and some more, the more popular you know bad guys like Harley and and uh, but but um I, I do I do not all of them are villains I think there is a couple like uh, that are there by coincidence and not not I think there there are that they're not specifically known as villains they're just kind of in between. But um, I will say they're one of my favorite Easter eggs, and I, I can't remember her name. I'm drawing a blank, blank, but it is a little girl in like a red dress, but it's on a keychain in a scene where they're in, in a van. And if you pay attention to the keychain that's on the keys, it, there is a, a little girl. Man, I'm drawing a blank at her name. Y'all you, you know I'm bad with names. Um, but some other notable Easter eggs that might shoot over your head, like um, the. the most of the movie takes place in a fictional location called Court Maltese. Uh, for all you Batman fans, you should recognize that. That is uh, specifically from the 1989, you know, Michael Keaton Batman movie, and that was, uh, you know, specifically referenced by Joker talking to uh, Vicky Val and her her article before she started doing the Bat, and it, it was about the devastation in Court Maltese. Um, Let's see, let's see, what, what else? I mean, but th there was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of different Easter egg references. I can say there was like very little Batman Easter egg references, but there were some other Batman side villains that showed up, like the Calendar Man, that there was uh, Sean Gunn, uh, James Gunn's brother, you know, showed up because he also plays Weasel, but he also appeared as the Calendar Man. A very very thin uh, calendar man looks a lot like his current iteration which is kind of cool uh, but there there are some other if you see like a multi-colored girl in the background at the at the Bell Reeve prison you that, that is another I can't remember her name it is another Batman like C-lister villain um, but I mean overall I love this movie honestly if this is what the way DCU is going I mean it, it is going in a really good direction I'm, I'm really looking forward to you know um, the Peacemaker TV show, um, and we got some more on the way too. We got the Green Lantern Corps TV show. Um, as far as the DC property, it looks like they're going to copy off of Marvel and DC. And, and in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with that. Marvel's doing right, right? So, um, and, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with having two big, co you know, comic book companies out there. Um, but that was my review on the Suicide Squad. It's a double thumbs up. I love the soundtrack, the, the, the acting, the story, everything. It was just a wonderful movie. If you, oh, excuse me, if you have a chance to check it out, you know, check it out and come back and chat me up. Let me know how what you thought about it. You know, I'm pretty sure I'll be talking about it uh, tomorrow night in a bigger fashion. But um, yeah, um, that's my review on the Suicide Squad and with some little spec news, some easily picked up spec stuff. Uh, because I do think this is going to be a big movie, and even though the movie's out right now, there's still some easily stuff that you can be found, you know, at your local FCS. Alright guys, y'all have a good one. Bye!